Okay, we're live. We're live. Anybody here yet? Yeah, they're all here. We got they're all here waiting for us because we're late. Sorry about that, guys. So today we're gonna do something uh, I think that you're gonna really enjoy. I, I do anyway, and that's creating your own patina on brass. Now we've talked about doing that with swell again, you know, any number of times, you know, the patina system. Um, and it works really great, but you can, you can do with a darkening patina and a torch, you can get it pretty dark, but you don't get it toasty like this. And I don't know, I think many of us, that's what we prefer, we want this toasty look. So this was a piece of bare raw brass, no color on it, yellow is the sunshine, <laughs> nothing on it. And I created this in my oven. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit closer so you can see the details of it. I did this in my oven. Okay, this happened in my oven. This is what the back looks like. It's pretty good. This hasn't been sealed yet because we're gonna talk about sealants a little bit. This has been buffed out. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you take it directly out of the oven. It doesn't look like this quite. You have to work with it a little bit. And I'm gonna show you today how to do that. Here's another one. This one, okay, there you go. This one's got a lot of highlights in it. Some of them I buffed in, and some of them I used my new little tool to do. I'm just really learning a lot about this. So we'll talk about it together and maybe learn together, but I put the highlights in this with the tool, and I'll show you how I did that, okay? So today, um, we're gonna talk about how do you do this. Okay, fine. There's um, a, There are a couple of videos from, 19, no, not 19, 19, 2010, 12 years ago, that I did on making gingerbread brass patina in your oven, okay? And all you need is a big glass dish, some cider vinegar, some salt, and I eyeball it. I put the, uh, the vinegar in to cover the brass. So a lot of times I put the brass down first, the yellow brass, put the yellow brass down first cover it with the cider vinegar, and then I take one of those um, big cans, you know, of salt, and I liberally, very, very liberally put salt over it. And I let it sit for about half an hour. And then I take a cookie sheet that I line with wax paper, and I put the pieces on that, don't let them touch, keep separation in between them, and I bake them for about a half an hour. Then I take a look at them. I might miss them a little bit with some more of the uh, vinegar and salt solution. I might. And then I let them bake some more. At, oh, I should tell you, at 450, high, high heat, okay? And I might leave them in there for another half hour or even an hour, just depending. You want to get them really nice and dark when you take them out. And don't worry if the wax paper looks like it's getting burned and all that. It doesn't matter. You're just going to take it right up, peel it out. It's not going to matter. Um, at all. So anyway, before I go any farther, I'd like to see who all's here today. So let's see. Debbie's here. Lori's here. Colleen's here. Anybody else? Oh, there's a bunch. Dara's here. Kate. Jessica. Did I miss somebody right down there? I think. Karen is there. And Ilyanka's here. And oh, Debbie. No, so that's about everybody so far. Well, that's a good group. I'm happy with that, and you guys are going to enjoy this. And we know, too, that uh, a lot of people just watch, so that's fine, too. So far, for all those who are out there just watching and don't want to talk, um, welcome. We're so glad you're here today. And if you want to talk, all you have to do is sign into your Google account, and then you can comment on here, okay? So, so we start out with a clean yellow brass. We have lots of that at bisuboutiques.com. No problem there. And then uh, we do the soaking, we put it in again at 450 for at least a half an hour, check it. You kind of have to tend it because it can get a little bit fumy. And you might see, you know, some. you need to get the windows open a little bit and put your um, hood, range hood on if you have one and turn it up. It's just vinegar, it's not gonna hurt anything, you'll be fine, but you know, it might make a little bit. So it's, you need to check it frequently. You know, you don't wanna go off and 
you know, do laundry and make jewelry and go on the internet and forget about it for a real long time. I would say maybe every 10 minutes or so, check. And when it starts getting really dark, you can take it out, okay? Sometimes you will notice, well, actually every time, you'll notice after you let it set for a while when you take it out of the oven, I usually take and I do a rinse when it's cool enough in that vinegar salt solution. And then after I do that, I let it set a little bit. And it might look kind of light, but it's really, it's gonna get darker, it's gonna get darker. And then you'll be able to, you know, do something with it. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. This Linda's is here, Pat's here, and Susan's here. Okay, that's great. Thanks for coming, guys. So this is a piece I just did this morning. She's going to zero in on it. This is the lady with the harp. A lot of you guys like this stamping. We have it at the site, and there's some at Etsy, too. Um, I don't know if you can quite see. I'm going to try and lift it up a little bit so you can. There's some kind of like grainy, powdery stuff over the top. That's the salt, okay? We don't worry about that. That, that creates... That creates um, some of the verdigree that happens after the fact when you take them out of the oven and you let them sit. Now, if you don't like the verdigree, then you want to take that off, rinse it off. But um, most people, when they make this kind of patina, like a little verdigree. And for those who don't know what verdigree is, it's kind of that um, teal colored look that comes up over brass. And the reason it does it is because um, there's so much copper in brass. Brass is 85% copper and 15% zinc. So, you know, it's going to play to the copper that's in it. So, anyway. So, this looks very chocolatey. Anyway, so let's go ahead and do something with this one. So, what I would do is I have different kind of processes I do. I'll take... I kind of hate to put this down because it makes confusion for you to see it. Um, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just use this one. Here's a white rag. I'll put it on that. You'll be able to see good what I'm going to do. I have several things that I do. I use steel wool, and I like a well-seasoned piece of steel wool. Like one's almost falling apart because that way you don't have as much of that grit and fibers and stuff falling. You know, you kind of get the job done. So this is the uh, quadruple aught steel wool. And I use that. Also, I kind of like to use a piece of old denim. Old denim is a great buff rag. Okay, so I like to use that. And I like to work on it with a sunshine cloth. And you can see this one's been liberally used already, but it won't matter in this case. I usually tell people uh, when a sunshine cloth gets all black and stuff, you need to stop using it because it's picked up a bunch of you know, micro elements out of your brass or whatever is you're cleaning and now it's embedded in the rag and you just scratch your stuff all up. But in this case, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So anyway, so I think I'm going to start this out using the sunshine. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of start what I'm going to wad it up and just kind of start going over it. A um, bit. Debbie says, do you have to seal it? Yep. Did you do that last? We got to do this stuff first. Yep, you got to seal it. And the reason is this. I really haven't... I'm taking this out right now. Um, I really haven't had a lot of experience with this stuff being transient, meaning it could come off. Um, but some people have said that they have. So I always seal it. And there are a number of ways that we can seal it. And I'm going to talk to you about that too. But first we got to get it buffed up. I don't want to see all these little grains here. Now that I'm done, I've got my patina. I'm going to try and get as many of them off as I can. And this is kind of the work of it, really. But I like to see the piece emerge, you know. So I'm just kind of looking for the detail and trying to, you know, raise a little bit of highlight and so forth so that I can really appreciate all the texture and all the elements that are in this piece, which is a beautiful... Art Nouveau type composition. So I've done that. Now I'm going to use my steel wool. What I do is I take it and I go around the edges first. And I, I'm trying to be care. I try to be careful because I don't 
want to take too much of this off, you know. But some would be good. Just so that we can see the details on the piece. See that how it's coming up now? Yeah, we're taking a good bit off of her, but that's okay because she's the highlight of the piece. And it takes a little while to get it. You know, and really, it's up to you how far you go with it, how much of the stuff you take off, how much you leave. But I like to, you know, keep it so that it's looking, you know, toasty like that. Hard to believe that's just vinegar water. That's what it did to it. Okay. So I'm getting that pretty good. So that I can see, you know, everything. And I've got some nice golden highlights. I've got a little bit more there I'd like to take off because I've got it a little shinier than I wanted there. But I'll take it around her, her face. That would be good. At least I think so. You know, it's all up to you. And because, you know, I want to show you a lot of stuff today. Um, I don't want to, like, worry about it, doing everything perfect because most of the pieces I won't. I won't seal on camera. I can work with them a little bit more later if I want. Now, after you get this all done, you can... Um, I'm going to get this off here. I don't like this. I don't like this. Hello. Um, what do you see? Oh, hola. Was that... Um, is Carola? No, no, no. This person right here. Yeah, hola. Oh, Marina. I'm a new subscriber. Pleasure to meet you. I've seen some of it past. Oh, thank you so much. We're so glad you came. Yeah, thank you. That's great. We hope you like our subject. <laughs> Susan says, oh, well, for some reason, I hate the smell of steel. <laughs> well, you know, if you really hate it and don't want to use it, don't. You could know, you use, use something, something else? else? Yeah. Oh, I know what you could use, but you got to be real careful because it might really take too much off. As you know, those grainy pads, those scotch bright pads you use, you know, in this oh. dish, with the dishes. Yeah, I still don't like the smell. Yeah. That, <laughs> I rather don't like the smell of that either. It's kind of like steel wool. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you. Put a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've taken my little wet wipe and going over this too. But you see now, when I do that, it's really lifting it. Yeah. So you don't want to do too much of that. So that's just a little admonition to you. It's still very pretty though. Okay, so... Basically, what we want to do now, I like it. It's toasty and pretty. And see what it looks like on the back? That's fine if it's kind of uneven and stuff. That doesn't doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to take my sunshine rag over that. But that, you know, showing you that wet wipe on there and wiping over it, that does show you how transient it, is, it can be until you seal it, you know. Mm. It could, you know, some could come off. But once you seal it, it's not going to. So... We're just selectively taking some off right now, okay? You guys might have seen um, where I took, um, no, I don't know what I was gonna say. I have to remember it. I'm concentrating on my piece and trying to talk. Oh, you, oh, I know what I was gonna say. You might have seen where I took this and made a cuff out of it. I put pictures up on the website. Maybe we'll do a project on that because I don't think I ever did that for a video. But you can. You can bend this right to go over your wrist and it's real pretty. So anyway, so you've got, I've got this evened out pretty good. If you, you know, you want it more so then you just keep working with it. If you want to raise a lot of it off of there, then we saw this kind of helps. Wet wipe, you know, if you want. Just be careful. And don't take off too much. But anyway, I'm sorry, Javier, I didn't mean to. So, you know, I think it looks pretty good. So what can we do now? Well, this piece has some rough edges. I don't know if you guys have gotten this one before. I know it has rough edges to it. And sometimes little burrs, like there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tiny burr here. So I'm gonna show you what to do about that. And that's where you might use this new rotary tool that I have at the website. We, well, actually, we don't have them on the website yet. We will next week, um, and I'll tell you why later. But anyways, 
I put on the sanding wheel. It has, um, just to show you what all comes with it. It's kind of neat. It's got these couple little tiny, um, little mini sanding wheels here. And it's got a buffer, which you can use. I don't know. I have to see if they have replacements for this. I don't know how long that will last. <laughs> kind of don't know about that. But anyway... And it has engraving tips too, like this one here. That's an engraving tip. It's not a drill, but I have found it works real good if you want to drill um, paper, thick paper, like we did in the class. It works real good for that. Um, I don't know about metal. You'd have to really ding it hard to make a really pretty good pilot ding on it, you know, to get it to fit into. And put it through and I, I think I, I'm almost positive it'll work for you but like for how long I mean you probably wear it off so it's more for an engraving tip and there's another one in here too I think it's this one for engraving tip. and I haven't tried to engrave with it yet but I will and I'll show you but I'm just real happy with it I like it I always had had um, a Dremel tool that I use. It's called a Dremel Silas, and I loved it because it, it fit a woman's hand just right. At least it fit my hand just right. And I loved it, and I I'm actually burned one up because I used it so much, and then I got another one, and it's still good. But you can't buy them anymore. So that's kind of the sad thing about that. But they came out with this thing, and I thought, well, you know, for something little to have, like, I'm working up here I'm in my office, not downstairs in my workshop where I have my bigger tools and stuff and my torches. Um, if you just need a little something, something, this is kind of nice. It runs on batteries. The batteries go in here. You need two AA batteries. It shows you how to put them in. Simple. You do that. Let's close this. Here's how the battery guide right here. And then if you want to change a tip, um, I'll show you after I use this, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So you just turn it on here. Now, you can't just turn it on and take your finger off of it. That's one thing I don't like. Um, you have to kind of keep your finger off. That's okay. So anyway, just kind of go easy. Where is that little burr I didn't like right in here? Just fill over that. Some of that's on here. took that right off now you can see it did make it light but this is the back so no big deal I think the cat's trying to get in here <laughs> this piece and you've probably noticed this on others of the golf campers they do tend to have kind of a rough edge, rough edge. You can also uh, attain this down with a piece of steel wool, but when you've got a piece that's got all this curving and stuff, it's kind of hard to get in there entirely. So something like this is kind of um, a nice thing to have. This is a little piece I don't like. Just kind of soften it a little bit. Where, you know, you think it's kind of high, like that piece there, I'm not sure I like it. See what it is on the other side? No. Use that. This little uh, sanding wheel, this is just as good as any Dremel one. So, it works good. Okay, that's pretty good. And then what I do at the end is I just take and kind of whack it a little bit with this steel wool. And that smooths it down really good over top of that. But what you might want to do, like when I made my, my cuff out of it and I bent it over my wrist and all that, um, I did line it with the um, micro suede, you know, like you can get at Joann's or something like that. In fact, we sometimes carry it on a site we don't have any right now, but it's super easy to do it. All you do is put this down, trace around it, and cut it out. And then you just E6000 to the back, and voila, it's all good. And you can drill right through it too. 
or drill it first, put it on, and then just puncture it through it. And probably this would be good to just take a little engraver tip to go through it um, after you put the micro suede. But anyway, so that kind of softens it down a little bit. And then if you want to use this to put a little bit of highlight, you got to go careful. But like, I'll do it like where these little wispy things are. I'll put on like that. Whoops, see, now I dinged her. That's okay. I can work with that. I can buff that up. That's the thing that's tough. I've had success with doing some that, um, yeah, I'll get past that. Um, that it, it's fine. But if it skips on you, you do have that risk. So you might prefer to get your little pieces another way. I just like it because this gives you more control, I think. Melinda said maybe you should wear safety glasses for that part. Maybe. If you want. It never hurts. I just have regular glasses on. Never hurts. I never have done that. But when I'm drilling, other things I have. But, um... I use my drummer, but probably you should. I'm, I'm sure that if you uh, look that up, you'll find that they say it's a good idea. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, I've got a skip mark there I'm going to have to work on to get the, get that out. I also use uh, denim sometimes. But I've just kind of got it all golden around the edges, and I'm, I'm liking that, so... I maybe get that. And another way you can do, and I think I might do this because I left it a lot of the patina up that I would have maybe like to see. It's a lot lighter than this one. You'll have that anyway. You'll find that from batch to batch on the brass, they may not come out as dark or you maybe needed to bake them longer or whatever. You know, that's the one thing about doing this. If you're wanting it to be totally consistent every time you do it, it's not going to happen because the brass sheet that they make it from can vary, can differ. So um, you may not like that, but you might have to deal with it by putting another patina product over it. But I was so proud of how these came out because I didn't need to put anything else on these. These are fine. There's even a little bit of verdigris coming here on this. Oh, these are fine just like they are. I mean, this um, this thing is really good for taking it off of the backs too if you want to get, you know, if there's a lot of detail. I've also found that the more dimension and detail your piece has, like um, this does, the better it takes. Flat pieces are kind of a challenge. You can do it, but they're kind of a challenge. So the more detail and the more you know, it's kind of relief detail on it, um, the better off you are. So anyway, so on this one, I might take and decide I want to add a little bit of gilders because this one did lift a good bit. So I'm going to use some of the patina gilders and see what I get. And this is something you play with, you know. You just play with, that's the fun of it, is that you can play with it. I'm just going to add a little bit where that little thing was. And I'm just hitting the high spots with it. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel with it. There's, I don't know if you can see if there's a little dragonfly down there. Maybe we can embellish him a little bit. You're quiet today, hubby. Yep. I'm gonna have to work on that. But anyway, that kind of shows you basics. So now you got that dusty look to it. And then you can seal it too. Um, number of ways we were talking about so you can use swell again clear coat and just paint it on and what I like about that is it dries really super fast it dries really super fast 
Um, you can use the Krylon, the matte, crystal clear. Spray it light nesting coats on the front and on the back are good. Um, you can also use a product that we sometimes carry. I don't know if we have any right now or not because it's, people just don't purchase it a lot. But it's called Renaissance Wax. And you've probably heard about that stuff before. So I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to put it over one of the pieces that I already did, you know, that I'm done with. What is that supposed to do? It's, seal, it's a sealant. Oh, it seals it? The only thing about it is is that it's a sealant, but after it gases off, you almost really kind of need to seal over it again because it's... See, now I did that. That was dumb. Anyway, it's, it's okay because I'm going to get a little on here and I might like it. Um, but here's what I like about it. You get this oiled down finish. So I'm going to take this heart that I did yesterday. It was in the same first batch. And there's the patina on the back that you can get. Um, I'm just going to take a little... It gives you this oiled brass look that I really, really like. It's smelly. It's a petroleum type product, so... If that bothers you, you may not want to use it or use it by a window or respirator, respiration, whatever you want. What else could you seal it with? Sell swell again clear coat okay. or a Krylon. Okay. The, but they won't give you this look. This is like that oiled brass look. And I don't know if you can really see it, you know, from the video or not how good this looks, but it, it looks like... I don't know, it just looks so old and wonderful to me. I like it. And, you know, you're going to get little spots. You know, you're, she's covering her face over here because she doesn't like the smell of it. I don't blame her aunt either. Let me see, where is it? I've, I've got it closed up. So we'll just yeah, you have it closed here. up. It's just... It's strong. And we would I would normally be downstairs with the respirator. I'm not respirator. I have overhead exhaust. I would normally have that on. I'm not here. So now that I've got it applied... And like I was saying, you know, you might get some little oil spots, you might get some little copper breaking through, whatever. That's just the interesting thing about it that makes it look old and wonderful. If you don't like that, then this probably is not for you. But if you love that, you know, old look, um, this is great. It does take some time to do, but the way I used to do it, because I haven't done this for a long time, but I, I've done, like, I haven't lost my knack really, um, is... I just take a day for it, and I'll bake a bunch of batches, and I have it to buff out and do another time. So this is shined up really good, and I'm using my old denim. I have an old pair of denim jeans you can cut up and make really wonderful buff rags. They have a lot of texture to them. And then, yeah, this is pretty. And then on the back, I might put a little bit too. Yeah, this is getting to me too, so we need to get rid of that. But I wanted to show you what it looks like. You know, used to be like 10, 12 years ago, everybody was into this kind of metal work and stuff. Everybody used Renaissance wax. Everybody. I swore by it. But, you know, it just is hard on your lungs. We could raise a window over there if you wanted to, Harry. I can't get up to do it right now, but if it's bothering you, you could do that. Or, you know, oh, it's already on. It's not bothering me yeah, too okay, much. Not too much, okay. I don't like you to suffer. <laughs> but anyway, you can see how different that looks now that you put it on. It's kind of mellowed. So what I would do with this is I would let it gas off really good, about 24 hours. And then I would probably maybe swell again or something like that. Some kind of a light sealant that's matte. Uh, go over it again and leave it alone then. I don't think that'll ruin the glow of this. But like I say, back in the day when I did this a lot, we left it alone. But I don't know. I think maybe today I would seal it. But it sure does look pretty. I like it a lot. Anybody out there used Renaissance, Renaissance wax before? Do you like it? I'm going to take a little bit more off of there. I'm going to put it on her and see what it looks like. I don't think too many of uh, the ones who follow me these days know about it very much because we just haven't used it for a long time. 
I don't even know if we have any right now. See, that tends to kind of mellow that, but it's lifting the, it's lifting the patina the, yeah. off. Yeah, so that's not too good. Still pretty. I like it. You know, it's just, you learn. That's the thing. The more you do this, the more you learn. You learn, you know, what, what works and what doesn't. And it's kind of a little bit of a crap. I'm just going to move this away from us. A little bit of a crap you know how it's going to come out but it's delightful i just love doing it i can't believe i haven't done it for all this time you know um this piece was out of a second batch the same one as she came out of and i just love it too i've buffed this back a little bit so far this is that irish piece with all the shamrocks on it so um can see now when I go over with the denim it's really starting to get some glow to it. The problem with some of these old stampings like this, you say, what am I going to do with that? Make a brooch. Yeah, sure. But a lot of people don't like brooches and most of us tend to try and make uh, necklaces. So you have to drill holes, one here and one here. You could you could uh, ding it with your center punch and then probably use the hole punch and probably do it. It's not a real thick piece. I'm sorry, I'm really making things wiggle because I'm going after this, but I think you get the, the gist of it, you know. You have to work with it a little bit to get it to come out how you like, but this is coming around real nice. I'm liking it. This is what it looks like on the back, real toasty and nice. Came out good. Then I wanted to show you uh, this. I did chain with it. Now this was, this I'm gonna have some fun with, let me tell you. Because I will add color to this. I won't just use it like this. So basically, I just wanna go down over it. You could use the steel wool here too if you want it. I've used it in circuits. So I've got good ventilation too though. Yeah, you do need it. It's killing Javi over here. I can't say I enjoyed it. Okay, so yeah, she still uses it. Yeah. There are sometimes it's just really good choice. Kate said I never sealed over the Renaissance wax. Well, I'll tell you why I started doing it, Kate. Um, it's because and I don't know, maybe they were wrong, but you know, I had a lot of people say that's not gonna completely seal it. What you have to do is you have to go every so many years and go back and redo the Renaissance wax on it again. I'm like, what? Well, I'm not gonna tell my customer who buys it, oh, by the way, send that back to me in a couple of years and I'll put, redo it, you know? So that's why. But if it stayed good for you after it's gassed off, then don't worry about it. Or you know what, in a case like this where you might make, maybe put this on a necklace, then maybe what you could do is um, you could paint the back with that sensor guard, which is like jewelry shield, you know, or, or with swelligant clear coat or whatever to seal it. So no Renaissance wax is gonna come up against somebody's skin, you know, that might be a good thing. Cause I don't know, they might react to it, but it sure is pretty. That oiled finish is surely pretty. Really, really pretty. I like it. Now, if you like blingies, gold and silver stuff, this look is not going to be for you. Maybe use UV resin all for that. If you want it really glossy. Yeah, because it kind of made it a little glossy. It did, but I it's, mean, it's, if you did but it's, one layer of It's satiny, though. That's satiny look. I mean, it's, Got it. That makes sense. Anybody can try it. That's true. It's always good to try. You know, that's what this is all about is experimentation so what I would say to you you know um, find some old pieces to play with first or Linda says I use Renaissance wax on torch brass but it changes the color haven't tried it on anything else it does it does mm -hmm. really yeah it can but see that's another reason see Linda I'm glad you brought that up because torch brass is heat resin oh, not heat resin it's heat patina, okay? This is heat patina too. You did it in the oven, only you have an agent that you use with it, which is the vinegar and a salt. But that's, um, it's heat patina. 
So it's going to do that. You've probably noticed, you know, the further away you get with the torch, you get a little bit prettier colors and sometimes you'll raise that rainbow so if you get real close you just it turns white because it's playing to the zinc that's in the copper um it, it, you know it's a little experimentation to get that to work right too but yeah i don't like i don't like anything but just doing krylon on top of that or unless i'm going to put some color on it then i do that first but so i'm just going down over this really good to get any grit that's on it because sometimes you will get grit that's still on pieces on pieces Am I using lunar paste? No, not on this, not yet. She said she was late. She didn't know what you were using uh, on the piece. Yeah, I use Renaissance wax. Um, it looks like this pad. I'll just show you again. It's micro crystalline wax polish. And you know what? Another thing that will work instead of this, it might not be so stinky. Turtle wax. It's pretty much the same thing. It's a micro crystalline po polish. So, cider vinegar salt bacon oven. Yeah, belt buckle be yeah that's what makes the color on the yeah the cider the thing yeah um if you guys get my newsletter i put the whole recipe in that newsletter last night so if you get it um you just go find it and click on it and it's all in there it's all in there for you to print it out or um if you don't get it you might want to but it won't help you for that time so go to the go to the um group because i always put a link on the group mm -hmm. and if you don't see it let me know how about if they're not in the group if they're not in the group then what you could do is you could email jordan at bcboutiques.com and we could copy you a link or we'll go to the description below and get the link for the creative group and then we'll let you in <laughs> Well, that's, that's what I was going to say, but I didn't. I says, if you're not in, you should be. <laughs> I mean, there was a new person on here. Just yeah, if you're not in the creative group, you, you, you should be. Because you'll you enjoy should. it. If you like this kind of stuff. It's really awesome. Well, Beautiful you. stuff. You like it. Beautiful stuff today. Whoever, uh, like, Joanne made that oh, one necklace. And yeah. I was trying to think whoever. Sarah. Yeah. Yes. And then, oh, and then Kate's earrings. because the Yes. <laughs> Yes, she did cut. If you guys didn't see the uh, video from last week, go back one. Javi's video is there. She did a great job on it. Proud of her. She had a beautiful design, and you should see how much attention her short, because she did it in fast time too. Her short. I was looking at Pinterest today, and her shorts are getting so much attention at Pinterest. It's crazy. We get notifications up at the bottom of our of our screen are just coming up to, 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 all the time. I said, man, we gotta let these people Pinterest know about the group and about, mm -hmm. and about the videos because, shoot, I mean, there's just a whole new bunch of people there. Javi replies to a lot of them. Does any, do any of them reply back again? Do you, have you start a really. dialogue with any of them? You know, sometimes they'll say thank you, and I'll be. <laughs> and that's very kind of them too, isn't it? But I never get any other response. So I'm like, oh, did they go and look at the stuff? <laughs> I wonder if you could just could you just copy my link? Hey, maybe you want to join us over here at the group on Facebook. You know Facebook. what? I should I should tell you. Yeah. And then Darla made some beautiful stuff today too. I yeah. liked her purple. Um, yeah, Dara's spinners were real pretty. Oh, Dara, Dara, Dara. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that purple yeah i like that it was a lighter purple so i'm going because you can get this grit that builds up my first batch i hardly had any but when i did the second and third i had a lot and it's from the salt so you need to get that off because if i take an eye drop you can't see it. It's gonna drop it yeah. when i it's not good right now when I first, not much anyway, <laughs> when I first took this out and I dropped it a bunch of times, little grits were coming off of it when I dropped this. Oh. I, don't want, I don't want that. So, I don't, you know, Is like, it the salt you think that yeah, caused that? Probably. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Reminded me of this one plater I used to use, and he could not do a hollow form very well. And so anytime you get stuff from him, you had to like just drop it, drop it, drop it, and clean it, clean it, clean it, because it's full of. Um, corn cob shot. I hate that. And if you didn't get it all out, it would start stinking in a few days. It was terrible. I'm like, hey, why am I paying you money to do that? But, oh well. 
So this looks pretty good. This is, this is really toasty and pretty. So what I would like to do to this would be to add just a little bit of color. Okay, so I'm trying to think now, what color do I want to use? Do I want to use the Patina Gillers? Well, I use that all the time. Um, do I want to try some lunar paste on this? Why not? I could. It's going to be kind of vibrant. But let's try a little bit of this. Or, or the teal. The teal might be nice. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Let's do that. The teal would be nice. I wish this teal was a kind little of, lighter. Cause it's, well, can't, can't you like mix really it with a little bit of water and make it lighter? I always think it would be. You, yeah, you could. Maybe. And you know what? I don't know. In this case, <laughs> you might want to because... These are full of holes, and you don't want that's true. Burpy paste yeah, going right. down in there. I'm going to still try a little bit toward the back. That way, yeah, I you just might get need a little, a little bit, bit like a lot, a little bit of water and a little. Let's yeah. just try this yeah. first. I'm going to do toward the back. That yeah, way, if I mess a few here. up, I just <laughs> kind of want to cut you off. Thank you. I'm addicted to the spinners. <laughs> See, it's not. I like the spinners too. They must have dried or something. I don't know. Well, isn't go. it fast drying? Yeah, it is. Lunar paste. We just got more this week, too. So if you haven't bought any yet, you can. I'm going to try any of that stuff. <laughs> so I'm just getting a little color in it, a little bit of patina glow in there, not a lot. I don't want it glurpy on there. And I don't want it to cover the whole thing. No, so there yeah. it is with some teal. I'm thinking this other color might be good, too. I used to do this with the swelling dent dioxides, and you, I mean, mm -hmm. you still can. I, we have videos on that, too. For, for the chain? Or? Uh huh. Yeah. But, um, I used to like this chartreuse color they had. It just gave it this really cool oldie look. Now, I got this stuff. This is that one that's called the spike. Psyche. 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 <laughs> oh, I think it's psyche. I don't know. I just kind of thought, it's got this, I'm going to take it out of the cap. It's got this look of this old green grass to me. That's what it looks like. So I'm going to put a little bit of that with it. I don't have too much and get all over my toasty grass, but I just want to add a little bit. Yeah, this is good. I like this. I don't know if you guys do, but I do. Can you see it? What's doing here to me? Oh, I see my ugly fingers too. There you go. Yeah. Just a little bit, you know. That's why I'm using my finger because I can control a little bit better. I don't want to get a big blob on it. Now I got another idea, of course. Um, what if I took this color and Luna paste? I tend to these, like, these are my triple colors I go to. So let's see if I put this in there. What happens? What will happen now? Yeah, the shorts are really getting a lot of views, but I know some people don't like them because they go too fast. But I guess you can get the drift. This is getting to look really cool. The, just a little bit of color on that, on top of that toasty color. And then the way that I would seal this, swell again, uh, sealant is really good on this. It's super good on this. So um, I could just, you know, take a foam brush and go down over it. That's really good. Or you can use the Krylon. But one thing you might have to do when you do chain, now this not so much because you have big links, but if you have small links, a lot of times what you have to do is go back and break up the links. You know, you have to go like this and move it around, kind of break it up. What are you looking for, Javi? I don't know. She doesn't know, she's just <laughs> looking. I think this bores her a little bit because this is not her thing. This grungy stuff, not Javi's thing. She's trying to be interested. But anyway, I, I do like it. 
I can see this with some cool earrings, all kinds. All right, here's I'm like, it'd make a really nifty bracelet, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, or like, um, pretty. They said they love it. Yeah, I do too. And you know, this we carry this at the site. We have a good bit of this at the site. You get three feet. So, um, you know, it does cost a little bit more. First of all, this kind of chain does cost a little bit more because it's made in the United States brass. So, and it's linked. So it's going to, but it's a good deal for this. It's 12 millimeter beads. We have it at the site. Um, oh, and I should tell you too, today, tomorrow, and, sa and Sunday. So today's August 26, 2022. So it's going to be August 6, 26, 27th, and 28th. Three days. 30% off if you do 100 up. The code's on the on the group. It's just 30 off. Off is capitalized. No spaces. You get 30 off. Not dollars per cent. So if you go over 100 um, and to go more, you say you bought 125, you get 30% off everything. So it's like, wow, you know, if you've been thinking about getting something, now's the time. So as I got to say, now's the time. So that's, you know, this is what I'll do with this and I'll finish it off and it'll be really great. But I'll show you a few other things too before our time gets completely away from us. Okay. Yeah, the site's cool. Psych or psyche, I don't know how you say it. Either. It is cool. And it's easy. You can see there's nothing hard about it. It's just, it takes a little elbow grease. You know, you guys saw where I made this um, bracelet by bending the luggage tag. I did another luggage tag. This one's a little bit more coppery than this one was. These came out really exceptional. But they're nice. They're both sold. This one and then the Peacock's. I say, how's that peacock? You can see it better if I hold it this way. Their little heads are up there. And they... I did a video on this with um, using um, just a torch and darkening patina and scrubbing it back. Oh, I don't know, three, four years ago, maybe. You can find it easy enough. That's what it looks like on the back. And these are both sold. These are going away, away next week. So how about that? I sold them right away. I didn't ask a lot for them, but I didn't have to. I didn't have a ton of them. So they're, they're, they worked out pretty Great good. Great for autumn with these colors, those colors. Yes. Very nice and toasty. Now, here's a piece I want to show you. Like, I mentioned to you before how that, um, the pieces that have a lot of dimension, like this piece, this piece is going to come out fantastic. Just about any time you do anything to this piece, it comes out fantastic. It's really great. Um, and like I have this little wheel here. I'm going to try. But I would have it raised a little bit. Of course, you can do this with steel wool too. I just like. I just like having stuff like this around because I can get a little burr off if there's a little place where it's not even or it's rough or whatever. I can just get it off Somebody really said, good. is that chain on the site? Yes. It is. It is. It's I in the chain I section. I thought we put that, I remember. It, was like it comes, like I was saying, it comes three feet. Three, yeah. So you get three feet in a package, okay? I think it's 18 or 19.95, which really, yeah. for 12 millimeter rosary chain, that's not expensive, but it is raw, so it's not plated. So, you could, but that's the good thing because you get to do your own thing too. I mean, you can make any color you want. You don't have to do toasty patina. You just paint it if yeah. you want. You know, anything you want, you could do. You, know, you can make it whatever color you want. But I just really like the cool vintage look of this. But anyway, so this little thing. Um, the buffer is nice too. It's all nice and it's just not really expensive. So, some might say, well, I'll just go ahead and buy a Dremel. I got one of them too. I just liked it. It came in. I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. It came in. I put it together and I've been using it constantly ever since. It comes with full directions, everything. Now, right now, what we have is we have a Muse that you can purchase. It's not on the website. I'm telling you about it. Um, you have to contact me directly 
uh, by, you could um, get hold of me at Facebook, Brenna Sue Lansdowne at Facebook, or if you don't like Facebook, you can contact, uh, you can call us here, 1-800-868-4393. If you have questions or you want to get one with a credit card. But anyway, it's a big, it's a big muse, and it has brass beads in it, filigree beads. It's got around 20 substantial, really good pieces of brass in it raw for you to do this kind of thing, and it, it includes the tool, too. Okay, seventy nine ninety five is what it is. And when I was putting them together last night, I had said this is about a hundred dollar retail value. Not this. I mean everything, the whole kit. Okay. So you're getting a deal. So I'm going through and I'm counting it up. I says, oh man, are they getting a deal? I'm giving the house away here because brass. You know, this is all U.S. made brass, and it's it's not cheap. You know, one of these pieces is usually about. Six ninety five in raw, let alone if it's plated, it's more, you know, because plating costs more. But anyway, you get a whole bunch. I think this one's in there, and this one too, and the luggage tag. You get that, and then you get this bow, and there's beads. Like I say, you get this kind of beads, and it, there's just a whole lot of cool stuff in there. Though, so I've got, I think, seven of them left. So if anybody wants one, uh, just contact me. As long as I have them, you're welcome to it. So it's just if you've not done anything like this before and you want to get into it and really mess around and have a good time, you'll have it. All you're going to need is you're going to need a glass pan, you're going to need dark cider vinegar, you're going to need salt, um, you're going to need a cookie sheet and some wax paper and your oven. And then the rest of it's just putting it in the oven and then buffing it out. You can see I use rags, so. And you don't have to buy Renaissance wax. Just some people really like it. It's expensive. I'm not going to lie to you, but it does last for a long time. I've had this, oh, 10 years. That shows you how much I use it. And I still have some left. Not very much, but I do have some left. You just only use a tiny little bit. But it, it is. It's stinky. Maybe you want to go buy some turtle wax. It'll do the same thing. It really will. I used to use it on polymer clay. Not Renaissance wax. Turtle wax. Seal it. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I used to. I don't know why I still don't. Anyway, but I wanted to show you before I leave today, what do you do with a piece like this? Honestly, guys, I'm amazed that it took this way, this well in the middle because it'll get kind of spotty or swirly because it's so flat. But this, this is pretty good. But it's gritty. So we need to get some of that off. Yeah. So I'm going to take this rag... Over it. No, no, I'm not using that one. I'm using this one. You just have to play with it, guys. You know, sometimes I use a sunshine cloth first. Sometimes I use a piece of denim first. You know, it's just whatever suits me. I think Kate owns that great big honking bracelet I made out of one of these one time. It's real good for a bracelet. Up top here, you know, and then I hang stuff from it because I've got all those, got all those holes, you know, so you can do that. So, so anyway, there's that in case you're interested. I know a few got them, and the tools not on the website will be next week, but some have contacted me and wanted to buy it separately. It's twenty eight dollars if you want one. Just just contact me. I'll sell you one. Don't have to wait. But it's not going on until next week because I'll be honest with you. I can't sell it to you for 30% off. That's why it's not going up right now. <laughs> next week it will. And, of course, I always have some kind of sale, but I can't do 30% off because what it is is everything on the website, everything, everything is 30% off if you have a $100 order. So, basically, you get $100 for $70, you know. Then when you go up, when there's uh, $100 in your cart, after um, the coupons, you get the free U.S. shipping, too. So see, that's bringing up, that really up. See, look at all the patina and vertigree came on the back of that. That's kind of messy, huh? It's messy. But um, they said, Brenda, you said wax paper. Do you mean parchment paper? You can do that, too. Either one. I always did wax paper. I don't know why somebody told me to, so I did. 
always use wax paper, but you can use parchment paper. Either one. You can use none. You don't have to put any there. I just always, it was, it made cleanup easier. Yeah. So you don't get all this even. junk all over your cookie sheet, you know. Especially if you're going to reuse it for <laughs> yeah. more things. Not for cooking, of course. Yeah. So, but you can see how I'm, I'm making this look nice now. It's it's coming up, you know. And you can always use your steel wool too, but just be careful here because you know, like, you can maybe scratch it because it's a big flat surface. When it's a, a surface like this, I don't worry about it. I'm not going to scratch it. But when it's flat, it could happen. You know, the more I think about Linda saying the safety mask, you know, or something, a mask to put on. And safety, safety glasses. Go, she said glasses, and, and I'm thinking now mask. You know, there's a lot of little, if you're going to do a lot with the steel wool in the daytime, you see how much stuff comes off of that? There must be some that gets airborne. You wouldn't want to get that in your lungs. So, if you're going to do a lot of it. Both are probably a really good idea. Now, I'm, I've just done some here. I'll come back and work on this later because I don't want to. It's kind of like I always say, what, watching paint dry. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. So, Anyways, but I want to get the, the front. So you can see, you can still see the kind of patterning that the, the grit did on there. So you might like it. If you don't, now you know what to do. Yeah, see, when these came out of the oven and they were still hot, I took and I, I sprayed them a little bit with the vinegar solution. And so some more of the, you know, vertigree came up. That's looking pretty good so far. Now I have to work on that some more to get it just how I want it. I like to raise some more detail up over this. Yeah, I really like this for the idea of I can, I can drill holes in paper. And I like it for the, um, the engraving thing. I used to always use a Dremel, a Dremel engraver. They used to make one. Um, they don't make it any, I don't know why they do this. I guess people don't buy them anymore. But they don't make it anymore, and I loved it because it fit in my hand just right to do the engraving. So I found a, a few overseas that were very much like it, but I haven't tried them yet, and I'm not going to carry them because the the um, shipping was so high that now it's just, you know, I can't resell it and make any money, and, and I have to. I have to pay the bills, so um, I don't know. I guess I'll keep looking, huh? But anyway, I used to use a drum one, and I loved it. I still have them downstairs. They still work. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I don't want to go downstairs. Yeah. You know, I, I like working here. I like working up here where I sunshine comes through the downstairs. window. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Beansy today. Yeah, what happened? She must be cooking something good. You guys ever see all that stuff she cooks? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, She's some kind of cook. Paul should be big as a house. I know, right? That's what I was thinking. Restraining. <laughs> Restraints of eating. Anyway, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty mellow. I like it. Me liking you, Nike. That came out pretty good. So, I'll have to work on the rest of this stuff, and I'll have to take a picture and show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and finish them tonight. I find this so relaxing. And I'll probably go ahead then and I'll take a picture and show you guys later what they, how they came out. But anyway, you know, you got options. It's cool, you know, but the thing about it is it's very hard to achieve a super uniform look batch to batch. Very difficult. That's the one thing about it. Like, if you want your stuff to look all the same all the time, I suppose you can mess around with it until you figure out some kind of a formula to where it's always going to look a certain way, you know. But um, I still think you'll have a hard time. You know, it's just not going to be that way. Sometimes it'll come out light. Sometimes it won't. Depends on the quality of the brass sheet. I notice when... 
oh, some time ago, there was kind of a shortage of the brass sheet for a while, and they must have been pulling stuff off the bottom of the wood pile or something out back. I said, it, it was some really crummy brass that came real dirty, and I wasn't happy about that. As you can see, just with the sunshine clock, how I'm raising this up a little bit. This piece is just the best one. It just always, I've used it over and over and over again. I just never, I never cease to be pleased with it. I'm always pleased with how it comes out. Yeah, I'll probably take my little thing and I'll go down over these little parts too. I don't think I'm going to do that on camera though because I think it makes me a little bit nervous and I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to skid out again. I have to be really slow and careful. Anyway, you saw how I did it. You know what I did with it. But there's just so many ways that that little tool can be used because um, it's just really good for little burrs and stuff that you get. And also too, have you guys ever noticed when you drill a hole in brass, the back's kind of rough thing. Like you'll drill, drill it from the top and it's fine, but then the back is kind of rough back here. Something like this would be great for that, to, to burr that off. You can get it off with file. You can get it off with steel wool, but this is just gonna be faster and better. If you already have a bigger Dremel that has the wire wheel and all that, then you may not want one of those, you know. I prefer to have them all. <laughs> That's me. I gotta try everything. But you can't always do that, so I use this to get this out. So you can see how that's coming on that. And that's gonna be beautiful and some. But it's it's this is more like a light milk chocolate as opposed to a dark chocolate, you know. It's a little bit lighter. And why is that? I don't know. The only thing I can think is I did not bake this batch as hard. Mm. Or as long. Is it the one with the lady in it? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's lighter. So I think, because I, so. I remember when I went to pick the one with this stuff up, I had gotten busy and forgot it. I'll be honest with you. I think I must have had it in for an hour and a half at least. Wow. And so when I opened it up, opened up the oven, it wasn't fuming or anything, but um, the wax paper was like incinerated. <laughs> I didn't. And it was really, really dark, but I took it out and I got the wax paper away from it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I like this. This is pretty good, you know? So anyway, so those came out super, super good. So that's probably why. I left it baking, and it's, it's high heat, too. It's 450 or a little higher, even 475. Um, I did have something interesting happen. One of these batches, I went to put the um, vinegar on it, and I'd run out of the dark cider vinegar, so I'm going to have to use white vinegar, and it will work. I just like the dark cider vinegar better. So I picked up this jug that I thought was vinegar, and it wasn't. You know what it was? Yeah. It was that hand sanitizer that they make it from whiskey. Yeah. And I dumped it in that. Boy, did that clean it up. I'll tell you what. It cleaned the brass good. But, and I took it out, and I rinsed it really good and everything. But some of that must have stayed on it. And when I put it in the oven, oh my goodness, it was just smoking like crazy. I had to go and set, in, set in all the uh, fire alarms off. <laughs> it's just like, don't do that. Don't do that. You gotta be careful, you gotta tend it. You can't just say, oh, I'll leave it in the oven and I'll go out back and pull some weeds for a while. No, you need to stay there with it and just kind of have a look at it, so. Maybe you could have some that came out and you're buffing them and, you know, now you're baking them. I made yeah. this while I was here. Oh, that's pretty. What is that, lunar paste? Yeah, it's a lunar paste with the per, uh, the, um, it looks pearls. like the It looks like the pox on the moon. <laughs> you see that, guys, the craters on the moon? Yeah, the craters that's on the moon. That's pretty. Yeah, it, it came, came out pretty. nice. I like that color. Yeah, it came out real good. You have a lot of fun with those, and those things aren't expensive either. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. It's nice, you know. Are those the plastic ones or are those uh... the ones that were damaged? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, let me see with that. I wonder if you can even see what I, was you damaged. You probably can't. <laughs> Sometimes they come in with little little scrapes on them. We have to take them out. I really can't tell. Maybe it was inside. It's beautiful. 
That's perfect. See, this would be a good, Ooh. good accent stone. Uh, wow. That does look nice. <laughs> wow. Look what you can do. <laughs> I'm telling you what. It just comes from playing around. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Same here. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so we, I think I would just, you know, I just found that I enjoyed doing this as much as I ever did. And I like the differences in the brass. I like the different applications, things I could put on it to change it up. And I really liked doing this chain. This, this, yeah. oh, I'm very happy with this. I might even do some up and sell it at Etsy, but it won't be 1995. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> so you might prefer to buy it and do it yourself, or maybe I would, you know, it might be better if I just made bracelets out of it or something. Javi and I found out that um, one of the highest watched videos for jewelry making, one of the most popular trending type things of it, is um, stretchy bracelets, which surprised us. Um, but, you know, these kind of things separate would make a good stretchy bracelet too, if you just had the beads. Oh, well, yeah. That would and then, I, then also, too, what was trending was not just doing one stretchy, but you do a stack. You know, you always see that. Um, so, so, well, maybe we'll have to do a stack our way. Might be fun. Do it pretty soon. So, we got stretchy cord, it came in, and we have stretch magic and clear and black, and it went on the site today. Yep. And also, those Stamperia papers that were in the class is pretty floral ones we got a few in and they are on the website too and those are all included in the dealio you know if you have a hundred bucks you get it <laughs> susan said i had to be careful with smoking for my oven the alarm company has a bad habit of sending the fire oh no oh, oh, isn't that awful you're trying to well, do then this don't, then don't, how about if you cook it don't <laughs> don't bake at high high heat like i do you just have to leave it in more put it could on you put head. it in a little mini toaster oven and let it but you can still get smoke out of that too well yeah you're right <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about. you know so, <laughs> so either way yeah <laughs> um i would just say put it in a lower heat and bake it longer you need like Maybe. a little you yeah. have to do that you know oh i was gonna tell you one more thing before i let you go too some of you might be remember when i wrote my book about 1928 jewelry company that mr bernie had given me a bunch of recipe boards and what those are is it had the original old piece on it glued down to it and then it stepped out all the pieces that they used to make it. And, you know, whatever the chain was, the measurement, everything. If they have to solder a piece, it would tell you. A lot of them had the piece on the front and then the parts on the back of it. And um, he gave me so many of them. I, I just can't keep them all because I have no place to display them or look them and enjoy them. So I decided I was going to part with some. They're on the website right now. They're different prices. You may not use a coupon with them. They're very highly collectible. There'll be nowhere in the, else in the whole wide world where you're gonna get something like that. If you love 20, 1928 and you collect it, you might wanna come get a piece, a couple of these because they're unbelievable memorabilia. I'll never forget how I felt when he gave them to me. But I said to him, now there's too many here. Is it okay if I sell for you? He says, yes, but don't sell them too cheap. That's what he told me. So they're running. I don't think they're bad. I think they're between $50 and $75 a piece. When you see what they are, you'll understand. Um, and also, you get the original piece. Yeah. This, you get the prototype. It's the first one they ever made. It's the prototype. So, I mean, I mean how do you even put a price on that, you know? So if you want to be able to wear it, you can soak it off the board. You know, if you don't care about the display, you want the piece, you can soak it off the board. My goodness, this, the piece is worth more than that. So anyway, so I have a few. I don't know how many I'm going to sell. I think there may be five on this site. They're in the Muses section, Muses and Kits and Classes section, and they're also on the page with the book. And those things, I think it's easy to remember that... Uh, you can't use a coupon with them because those things are blocked out. You know, I don't want coupons on those things. But you can, I mean, everything else, we've got thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of things on there. We do have 1928 jewelry on there, too. I had found a whole drawer full of it that I had bought 
for resale a long time ago when it didn't cost quite as much as it does now. So um, we have some of that up, some of the whistles and things like that. So that's fun. Some mag magnifying glasses. Um, Pat said, can you use a kitchen oven or is it safe to cook f food after? Is it safe to cook food yeah, after? Yeah, I would probably, you know, it's just vinegar. Yeah, it is just vinegar. It's just vinegar and salt. So I would say, yeah, sure, I use mine. But I'm not using it every day to do this. You know, I'm not like baking all the time brass. But what I would do, what I'm going to do before I use my oven again to, to bake something, I'm going to take it and kind of take a rag and wipe it out a little bit, you know, just to freshen it up, which will be okay. You know, they tell you you can bake polymer clay in your, in your home oven too, but <laughs> I wouldn't do that no. often, you know. I mean, they, they say, oh, you can make like a little oven inside of it by putting it in a big roaster pan, then covering it and all this, but... Um, it's better to get a dedicated oven for that toaster oven. And often, to, to, to be honest with you, um, so long as the toaster oven will go up high heat enough, you can use it. You know, use your polymer clay toaster oven for that. Mine has two levels. It has an up, upper level and a bottom level. So I could probably get a good bit in there if I wanted to do it. But I have it in the basement. I don't have one up here. So I just like to work up here these days, so. Anyway, I like to work by a window. Oh, there's a nice window letting light in down there, too. It's just, I like this window. <laughs> so anyway, well, listen, I think I've yacked on enough. Does anybody, um, does anybody, she lives in an appointment? An apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love those phones and uh, keywords that like to tell you what you want to say? Anyway, Andrea, you're fine. Nobody's ever late. She lives in an apartment. Uh, yeah, well, I would say, I mean, you can use your oven to bake stuff. Um, just bake it at lower heat. Could you, you know. use a torch if you wanted to? Would you be allowed to use a torch in your apartment, well, yeah. Jessica? I wonder if you can use a torch, you can use an oven. I think know. so, too. Um a torch you know what i thought about that this morning when this stuff was kind of wet yet yeah i thought about i thought about getting um my hair dryer my blow dryer oh like the heat tool yeah or the heat tool that we carry it's mm -hmm. very hot that's true the, you might you might do just as well just to have the piece you know sitting right there and just use the heat tool because it's very, very hot. You have to be That's very true. careful. Just put it on a metal pan. Yeah, you know, regular sure. heat tool will do it. Yeah, yeah, that will work too. So if you want to do it, there's a number of ways it's going to work for you. And I don't think it's going to be a problem with the apartment type thing. You know, you just don't want to, you know, like when you're cooking, you don't want to make the fire line go <laughs> off, you know, so you don't want to make it go off with this either. That's all. So anyways, so does anybody... Um, have uh, I live in little towns so everybody and their brother calls a check on well that's a lovely thing Susan honestly okay does anybody have any questions does anybody have any that you saw mm -hmm. already, already well I hope you enjoyed this I hope you're going to try it I hope you try it I'm sure most of you have some raw brass that you can work with um, if you don't we do have it and you could come and just buy a few pieces you don't have to buy that Muse the Muse is a good deal it's a really good deal, but you know, if you don't have that much money to spend and you don't want to spend that much, just come and get a few of the bigger pieces that have a lot of detail to them and, and do those and see maybe if you like it, it might be good. So anyway, so 